All right, so now we're talking about the rig controls and the actual um, the pre-bend and what the, uh, the uppers do. So the mass bend is really controlled by your uppers, your lowers, and your backstay. The uppers tend to bend your mast a little bit more. The lowers tend to pull the mast in. Uh, we talked about the fact that the lowers will also affect side bend, uh, not as much on a J24, but um, you know, on, uh, on a J24, we're mostly concerned with 4 aft. And you know, the other thing that affects uh, mass bend, which we didn't talk about here, really is main sheet. Um, so if you're sailing a fin or if you're sailing a, you know, a laser, that's, you're just bending the mass all with the main sheet. Uh, we, to some degree, we do that with the, the thistle. We don't have a backstay. So lightning, you guys will use a backstay because you have one. The inner club, you know, we, we don't have one. So we, uh, we drop the traveler down, and we pull the main sheet really hard, and that's how we bend the mast. In fact, it's interesting on, a, uh, on an inner club, we adjust the length of the force stay. The mass is very bendy. So when you're sailing upwind, you adjust it so when you pull the main in really hard that the mass stops bending because the force stay stops it from going further up top. So the, mass, the, the force stay is just loose, floating around. You can bust your force stay and probably sail the whole day. You never even notice. The only thing it does is sometimes when you pull really hard on the main sheet, it stops the mass from bending too far. That's the only reason you need a four stay on, a, on an inner club. Um, I'm sure we've all busted four stays, and you can sail. You can keep sailing. <laughs> Seems really weird, but you, the jenny up, though, don't you? you can't put the jenny up. Yeah. <laughs> so the main sheet does have a big effect on the on the bend. Now, the uh, the mass is so stiff in a J24, it really doesn't do a lot, and that's why I kind of left it off the list. But it's important to note that depending on what boat you sail, it could make a big difference. So go ahead. Um, this is just going back on what, what we do. You blade it out, that top picture, showing it bladed out with, um, with making more, bet, more mass bend. Oops. More mass bend, and then um, maintaining your draft position. So what they mean by maintaining your draft position is, um, well, that's actually a different subject. I think I probably stole this foil from something else. <laughs> so we'll get it. That, this was all about moving your Cunningham as, it got, as you bent your mast you got to make sure that you, you're pulling the, the front of the sail out. You're making it flatter up front, mostly. So you need to pull Cunningham on to pull the, the draft forward again. That's really a, part of the separate discussion, but it, it's kind of you know, kind of interesting to note that that's what happens, is you have this, this kind of utopic shape, and as soon as you pull it, the shape out of it, you, you do need to start putting Cunningham on to pull that draft forward. Now you're doing that anyway. You all know that you know, the windier it gets, you're pulling the backstay on, you're sheeting harder, you're pulling the, the Cunningham on. You know, it all goes hand in hand. But that, that's why, is, is it's, um, as you bend your mast to flatten your main, you're actually moving the draft aft too. So. Um, the question was, uh, we, we often talk about, go back one. Uh, uh oh, where'd you go? Yeah, so on this one, um, I wish I had a good picture of it. but. The, what happens is if, um, you know, the question really is what happens when you bend the mast past the luff curve? So let's just say we have a, a, a boat here that has a certain amount of luff curve built into the main. Let's say that's, uh, that's, Robert's, that's Robert's fin main, which just has a ton of luff curve. All right. And here's the leech of the main, right? Here's the boom. Got your battens, right? So he's got a ton of luff curve, but what happens if you just bend it too much? And the answer is you're going to start seeing these overbend wrinkles. There's these wrinkles that kind of come from where it's bent the most down toward the, the, the uh, clue of the sail. And it's OK to have a little bit. These, these luff curve overbend wrinkles come when you, as soon as you pull out all the cloth, you've, you've bent the mass to the max. And you go past that, you actually start scrunching the cloth in there. You're, you're inverting, we call it inverting the sail, overbend wrinkles. And what I like to do if it's, if it's breezy, you know, that's when I know I've sort of gotten to the point where by bending the mast anymore, I'm not going to help it anymore. That's it. I've, I've bent it as much as I can. I, I really find this um, really obvious in a J22. Those of you that sell J22s, is as we pull the backstay on, um, it, the mass is a lot bendier than J24, and it's, and it's stepped at the deck, so it can bend a lot. 
And I, you know, I find I'm used to sailing J24, but I pull up pretty hard. And I, I quickly find that I overbend the mast, and I, and I get these inversions. And the, and the J22, you can get them right down to the corner of the boat. And you know you've way overdone it. The tail just looks terrible. And uh, so what I do is I just keep pulling on the backstay on a J22 until I've got some overbend wrinkles. Now, I do the very, very same thing on a J24. I start, or a thistle, I do it with those little shims in the back of the mast to kind of get compression bend. On the, on the JY, I did it with the blocks. Uh, so whatever I'm sailing, I know that I've depowered as much as I can with the natural shape of that sail with the controls I have without using, before I use the sheet. I've done everything I can when I start getting these overbend wrinkles. And these are key. Uh, there's certain people that that's all they talk about. Um, a couple issues ago in Sailing World magazine, um, Greg Fisher did an article on, on exactly that's all Greg ever talks about, right? Julia, every time we talk to him, he's, that's all he's talking about is overbend wrinkles. And um, so that's how he sets up. He, he bends his mast so he gets some overbend wrinkles. And that, he knows where he is then. He knows he's right at the edge. And if it gets a little lighter and needs more power, he straightens it out from there. And he gets a little bit more if he, uh, if he wants to depower more. OK, so the head stay sag is really um, it's controlled by your main sheet. And even in the J24, it is. So you're, you may be bending a little bit but with the main sheet. But as soon as you put the back stay on, it's, it's, it's huge effect on the fore stay. So you can be sitting there at, at your 2015 base on land. And you just pull that back stay on, and, and you go feel that fore stay. And it's going to be nice and tight. So it's. Um, the, it's done by the, um, and the uppers really affect it too. If you're just sitting there on land, and you just keep pushing on the uppers, and the, and the mast butt would too. I didn't really put that on there, but um, if you keep pulling on the uppers, you're going to keep pulling the force stay tighter, and that's because your you know your shrouds are back here a little bit, and you're just pulling back on the on the whole mast when you do that. It's not a lot, but it, it's on land when there's not any other forces, it really comes to quite a bit, huge difference. So go ahead. And then the lowers also affect the, um, the side bend of the, uh, of the mast. So as you use the lowers, as we talked about before in the J22 example, that was how the lowers did it. So 